Mr. Johnson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, the chairman, when he showed his video this morning, uh, we witnessed in that video someone asking the question, is free speech dead on campus? I think that question uh, applies to Congress. It's ironic that we're holding this hearing today about censorship and uh, speech on campus, uh, but last night, uh, MAGA Republicans and others censured the only Palestinian voice in the House of Representatives because they didn't like what she had to say. She didn't threaten anybody. She did not uh, advocate for violence. Uh, she stated a view uh, as happens on college campuses. It happens across the country. We have freedom of speech in this country. But she was censured last night for exercising her First Amendment right to freedom of speech. And uh, we're not setting a very good example uh, here in Congress. We are all reeling from the situation in the Middle East. Passions are running high throughout the country, but they are especially intense on college campuses. Every student, including students of Jewish, Israeli, Muslim, or Arab backgrounds, deserves a safe college learning environment free from threats of violence and discrimination. It should go without saying that threatening violence against people because of who they are is illegal and never acceptable. The Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights is primarily responsible for combating anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and other forms of discrimination in higher education. The Office of Civil Rights has already seen a dramatic rise in Title VI discrimination claims in the wake of the October 7th attack by Hamas. But the Office of Civil Rights needs sufficient funding to carry out its civil rights enforcement mission. President Biden's budget requested a 27% increase in funding for the DOE's Office of Civil Rights, but MAGA Republicans are pushing to slash its budget. MAGA Republicans need to stop playing political games with Jewish lives, with Muslim lives, and all students' lives by giving the Department of Education the money that it needs to keep students safe. Uh, Professor Nadell, what lessons can we draw from the long history of anti-Semitism, and what do you think criticism of the government of Israel or let me ask it this way. Do you think that criticism of the government of Israel is always anti-Semitic, or does it depend on context and how such criticism is expressed? Thank you for your question. As a historian, I think everything depends on context. Um, I think we always need to think more broadly. It's very clear the criticism of the government of Israel is not ipso facto anti-Semitic. If it were, hundreds of thousands of Israelis who he had watched in the past months turning out to throng the streets of Tel Aviv and of every city and hamlet in um, Israel would have been seen as anti-Semitic. So it, criticism of the government's policies is not by itself anti-Semitic. However, what is anti-Semitic is absolutely is to deny the Jews the right of self-determination, a right that is internationally protected, and to um, call for the destruction of the state of Israel. So there's no question about that. What we know from the long history of anti-Semitism is we know that Jews live with memories of hate against their people that go back to ancient times and that they live with the fear or with the sense that they may encounter it in their lifetimes and that they are afraid that it will continue forever. We know that anti-Semitism, in those three little examples I gave you, that anti-Semitism has coursed across American history. It has risen in some time periods, and it has been more under the radar in others. Historians used to call the years between 1933 and 1945 the high tide of American anti-Semitism. 
I have been saying, not just since October 7th, I have been saying for far longer that we are living in the high tide of, Amant of American anti-Semitism, but I won't be around to write about that. But we are, what we hear from the students, but also what we hear from those who are afraid to walk into their synagogues, who are concerned about the future of, the, of, their, of their children, of their grandchildren. My, uh, my niece did and, not and I, send her daughter, I, one second, my niece did not send her daughter to a Jewish preschool on the day of global jihad because she was afraid it would be attacked. We need to deal with that in the United States. Thank you, and it wasn't made easier when uh, ex-President Trump made his remarks about there's good people on both sides when he's talking about down in Charlottesville. But thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. We now recognize the gentleman.